Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This one's going to be a bit of an explanation about exactly what's going on with the e-bike, a bit of an update, because uh, in the previous videos I've also mentioned that I've got a few issues with the Sabaton, uh, but I'm also making progress in other areas such as the lighting, so I thought I'd just do an, uh, a video, just kind of free, scripted, whatever, um, just explaining what's going on. So, as I said in my last video, the root cause is the controller is basically not supplying the power in the correct way. What's happening, I say now, that possibly I didn't explain in the previous video, is that when you first turn the controller on, and you'll see this in some footage that I've sent to the supplier later, I've included it in, if you check the timestamps at the bottom, I'll put it in there. Basically, when you first turn the controller on, it delivers about 37 amps full throttle. So you pin it full throttle, 37 amps. Now I've set it, I've actually set it to 170 amps DC because they've given me some software which allows you to push it beyond what the control is meant to do. And that's designed to compensate for the fact that when I set the software to 150, it only puts out 130. So that's another thing that's a bit weird, but that could just be like a non-properly calibrated current shunt, so that's not the end of the world. Then about a minute later after riding, it will give me about 72 amps full throttle. Um, and then a little bit later, if I go full throttle, it gives me the 450 amps. Now, I still don't think something's right, because as I said, on my on a controller I've had before, on this bike, I did a 0 to 20 in it was about 2.99 seconds, 0 to 20 mile an hour, which is pretty slow, but as a benchmark, right? And then on this bike, running supposedly 150 amps, it did 3.46 seconds, I think, which makes no sense, because the old bike was set to 80 or 85 amps DC, and this one was set to 150 amps, so I think something's up there. Now I'm just going to run through why I don't think it's the other parts of the bike because some people said, oh it's your BMS, it could be your battery, your motor's overheating, all these things. So correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but I'm just going to run through why personally I think it's the controller. So let's start off with the battery. Now some people have said that the battery might not be able to supply the amount of current or there could be a dodgy connection. Now these cells, as I said in my one of the very first videos I did in this bike, are more than capable of supplying 150 amps. These things should be able to do 200 amps for, for a long time. Um, and given that the voltage sag when running 150 amps is about 8 volts, um, I can well believe that these could do a bit more current. Um, so I don't think it's, it's not the cells themselves, and also other people have used these pushing kind of 20 kilowatts. If you look at the cyber bike that Lardy has done, I'll put a link in the description mental power, same cells. The next thing is the connections between the cells. So I'm using aluminium bus bars, uh, which are bolted down with two screws per cell. I don't think it's those at all. Um, they're a very sturdy connection, um, and they're clamped down with quite a bit of force. So that leaves the blocks that I made, that I connect the lugs to the Anderson connectors to connect each block together. I'll put a card in the top right if you actually want to see how I built the battery, if you're thinking, we'll see on about. So go and have a look at that if you're not quite sure. Now I have had a few issues in the past with them not making good contact, or making contact on one of the parallel cells but not the other. So you get a big voltage drop on one particular cell. However, now that I've got the BMS with the Bluetooth app, I can screen record whilst I'm accelerating and see if there's any kind of one cell that stands out. And there isn't. They all go down the same amount. And if they're at about 4 volts per cell, they go down to kind of 3. Point, I think it's 3.4 volts a cell. Um, so there's still loads of headroom, perhaps not even that much, maybe even 3.6 or something. So there's loads of headroom. So it's not the cells, and I don't think it's the connections. So apart from that, on the battery side, I can't think of any reason why it would be. And also, that doesn't explain why the current kind of ramps up from when you first control, turn the control on. If it was an issue with the battery, and this is kind of a running theme for my logic, is that it wouldn't be able to supply the power at any point. So, yeah. Now, as to the BMS, I think this is a pretty simple one. The BMS cannot regulate current like that. It's either on or it's off. Um, so, yeah it, it, yeah, it can't kind of open up, it's not like a valve that it can open up, it's like the switch is on or off. Um, that's why I don't think it's the BMS, and also, as I say, I can monitor it through the app. I've done loads of screen recording, um, it's not getting hot, 
Um, and even if it was an issue with the BMS, you'd think it would start off giving full power and then kind of tailor off as it got hot or whatever. So I don't think it's that. Onto the motor. Now some of you might know I did rewire the motor and you might be thinking, well that could be an issue. Um, the thing with the motor is that electrically it's pretty simple. You've got three wires going in for the phase. I connected each of the new wires directly to where the old wires came off. Made a really good solder connection. Um, no, no way that's coming off. Um, put tape around it, made sure they were as far apart as possible, zip tied it all down. The hall sensors, again I put them in exactly how they came out and the Sabaton, it recognises the hall sensors, it passes the hall test and if I don't connect the sensors it doesn't work and it shows up an error. And you know the motor runs smoothly and stuff. So I don't think it's an issue with the hall sensors. Now when you do run it at high power for a while the wires get a bit warm but it's mainly towards the end with the motor, so I think that's just heat from the stator conducting out through the phase wires. I don't think that's the phase wires getting hot. And again, also, these phase wires are actually thicker than the ones I replaced, and they've got thinner strands, which is better for high current. So I don't think it's the phase wires. Um, you can't be the hall sensors. And again, the motor, there's not really much to go wrong. Um, I think it would either be burnt out, or it just wouldn't work at all. So or it works, sorry, it'd either not work or it would work. Um, and again, why would it ramp up the power? If anything, it would ramp down the power. Um, so, I mean, again, the throttle, no reason why that would ramp down the power, that would just stay continuous. Again, it's the fact that it ramps up the power, not ramps down. And you'll see in the videos, I put up screenshots of the settings I'm using, so I haven't got like a really long throttle delay. And once you get to this kind of 150 amp power, you know, the throttle's really responsive and it's just as if it was always like that. It's just the build up. So that's enough of me waffling on. I'm going to play some footage that I've sent to the company and that I've recorded of the issue just to try and demonstrate it a bit more visually. Um, it's, it's not a big deal for me. I mean, the bike moves, so I can get through the MSVA on this and hopefully trying to sort something out where I can get a controller, at least try a controller from someone else um, in kind of September, October time. So if you're watching, you know you are. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to see what the company says. I've sent them some more footage. If they acknowledge that they're the problem, which from my point of view, I clearly think there is, um, and if they offer a refund or whatever, then great. If not, then phew, I don't know what I'll do, really. Um, as I said, I'm just waiting on this hopeful controller in September where I can test it out with a different controller um, and hopefully prove that this one is faulty by showing that another one works properly. It's annoying that I blew up the first one, but y you learn on these bikes, you learn so much by doing it, and that was one of the learning learning the hard ways, so, hey, anyway, let's roll the footage. Right, so here's the bike, uh, the Sabaton is down underneath here with all the wires coming out up there. Uh, motor, throttle, obviously. Um, so yeah, I've put these settings to what the customer service um, suggested. Um, I'll put up some screenshots if I can. So yeah, let's see what happens. Okay, I also have the app connected so you can see the voltage, the motor speed, the current or well, the watts that are being drained. Um, so yeah, nice and smooth at low speeds. Okay, and then just give it full, full throttle after these cars really. And full throttle. Okay, now that was a lot better than normal. Um, normally it's only doing about 3,000 watts. See, it's almost like it takes a moment to warm up. You saw what I was doing before. Now this is full throttle. Three kilowatts. Ridiculous. See if it takes a moment to warm up. It's getting there. <laughs> what is wrong with this thing? It just needs time to think.
Okay, now we're back on power. That is not normal. <laughs> Okay, here's what I mean about the bike. I'm just going to turn it on now. Uh, I've got the speedo here. And here's full throttle when I just turn it on. That is full throttle. I've set this to 150 amps and that is full throttle. I hope this shows up on camera. Now this is full throttle. Anyway, now it's back on. This is full power. I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Now that, it's just all over the place, I'm sorry. Okay, this is with the bike powered on and with the new software you sent me. Full throttle, now. And off. And full throttle, now. Okay, and full throttle now. Full throttle now.